Dr. Roshanoff, uh, at the 2016 uh, ASPRIS meeting, you presented a paper on calculating the dose and determining the administration technique for uh, intercomeral uh, moxifloxacin. Could you explain your paper? Sure. Well, the point of the paper is that everyone in the world is using either intercameral uh, kefiroxim, moxifloxacin, uh, or vancomycin. But no one really talks about how we arrive at the doses we use or what we choose to use. And in fact, there have been some papers recently talking about intracameral moxifloxacin where the expected reduction in infection wasn't as good as you would think. And we expect to get about an 80% reduction of infection with any of these agents, as the ESCRS reported, and many other studies showed the same thing, including us. Um, but what happens is some people have been using lower doses. So I thought I would go through in a paper the microbiology of how you calculate the dose you want to use, uh, how long it lasts, and how we can administer it. So that's what I did. So I presented the data on the MICs of the most common pathogens in the eye, and you want to have a cytal agent, uh, and so you want to have 10 times the MIC of the most resistant strain. And so then I calculated how you can do that in different formulations. And you can just use Vigamox, for example, right out of the bottle, and it's adequate. But the problem is, it comes and you people inject 0.1 cc. When you inject 0.1 cc into the anterior chamber, you have no control of the anterior chamber. 0.1 cc came from people injecting agents uh, to cure endophthalmitis into the vitreous. There's no space in the vitreous, and you can't inject a large volume. But in the anterior chamber, we can dilute it and plan to exchange the volume of the anterior chamber or more or less exchange the volume and get the same dose. That way, if you put a little bit more, a little bit less, you don't really change the dose that you give. And so if you calculate that out, you can prepare such an agent by taking an entire bottle of Vigamox, which is three cc's, putting it in a syringe, um, and then add seven cc's of balanced salt. And that gives you a concentration of 150 micrograms in 0.1 cc. And if you inject 0.3 cc's of that, that essentially replaces the volume of the anterior chamber. So you could inject even more. You can inject 0 0.4, 0 0.5, because it washes out. And you can use it to seal the incisions. You can use it as a, an agent to use at the end of the case of surgery. So you just exchange the anterior chamber volume, seal the incisions, you know, and then go home. And so it's much safer, and you know how much you got. You didn't either give too much or too little, as you might do with 0.1 cc. Um, the take-home message for the clinician in, in his practice and for in, in, in doing this technique, what is it for him? There are two take-home messages. One of them is that there are now over a million and a half eyes studied in valid studies around the world showing that intracameral antibiotics significantly reduce the infection rate by 80% depending, well actually irrespective of whatever your background infection rate was. So whether you had a high infection rate or none for 10 years, you'll still reduce that 80% if used intracameral drugs. And that's been shown in huge studies in the National Database of Sweden and all kinds of big studies, uh, as well as some small ones. So, and then we want to find a drug that we can use. One of the problems of using kefuroxime, which the, is its 0.1 cc, and also, if you get an infection from kefuroxime, and we always have to look at what happens if something fails, because something will always fail. There'll always be cases that escape our treatment. So if you get a fail, a failure case, and you get an infection, they're usually enterobacter, because enterobacter is not sensitive to kefuroxime. But enterobacter is also not very sensitive to the drugs that we use to treat endophthalmitis. So we often lose those eyes. Whereas if you use moxifloxacin, because it's a drug that has a mechanism entirely different from the drugs that we use to treat endophthalmitis, if you do get an infection, and which will happen with the same rate probably as kefuroxine, it ends up being very easy to treat because the drugs that we now use for endophthalmitis work in entire different mechanisms. And the chances of having a bacteria that are resistant to both wildly different mechanisms is extremely low. And so in those cases, like in Sweden where they have their national database, they find that the moxifloxacin failed infections are easy to treat, whereas the kefuroxine ones aren't. Thank you, Dr.